Okay, I got it. And this is calibrated ahead of time using cone units. So clockwise is giving me longer range. Yeah, it's rising off the barrel and it's a pressure system. So just looking right by it. But you want to keep all the washers in order on top, underneath, with the screw in the same location. You move it 1,000, like 80, when it's laying on people's feet, you have to get the caliper, move it, and measure, figure that out. That makes sense. So at 3,000 yards, it's not like an angular problem that gets worse and worse and worse in time. It's parallel with the bore axis. There's not like a, a round lens. That's correct. It's in prism. Howdy guys, Rex here. Today we're going to take a look at the TACCOM HQ Charlie Terak. It's an optical sight accessory. You're going to put on the front of your rifle optic to give you a huge amount of additional mils or minutes of angle of adjustment uh, over what you already have on your elevation turret adjustment and in your reticle. Now when you're shooting extreme long range, uh, after a certain point you start to run out of dope. You start to run out of adjustment range on your scope. Doesn't matter how much tilt you got on your base, at some point, if you shoot far enough, you'll run out of that. Now, if you're shooting beyond a mile or if you're trying to get out to two miles, there's a huge amount of elevation adjustment you need, far beyond which most rifle scopes have to offer in conjunction with any kind of conventional basis. One of the tricky parts, a lot of guys will use a highly radical um, base that will have a huge amount of uh, additional holdover. One of the challenges to that is that you're not going to be able to be as flexible because at, after a certain point you can't even establish a 100 yard zero or 100 meter zero if you so de desire to do that. And a lot of guys like to be flexible, you know, they like to be able to engage targets from point blank range all the way out to the max effective range that their scope would have. And then if they want to go beyond that, they want to seamlessly pick up where they left off, maybe add an optical accessory and uh, shoot that way without having to get uh, readjusting all your ergonomics. Uh, there are adjustable scope bases, and that's a pretty cool design. I think that's a neat way to go. Uh, one of the issues to that is that when you keep readjusting your ergonomics to get your uh, head centered behind the scope properly, if you're tilting the scope up really radically in the back, you have to reestablish your ergonomic uh, position with your with your cheek piece and everything else and also the way the rifle recoils is going to be a little bit different because you're going to be laying behind that thing differently to get behind the optic. So those are a couple of the challenges associated with ELR shooting in terms of getting enough adjustment range out of here. So you can use adjustable mounts, that's one way to go, or you can use a permanently uh, fixed mount that just has a radical amount of adjustment in it or a radical amount of uh, tilt to it. Uh, so you can have like a 60 minute base, 140 minute, minute base. Some guys have 300 minute bases for extreme long range shooting. But like I said, then you're kind of stuck in that range. You can't shoot up close and still have an aiming point. Uh, the nice part about what I'm going to show you here is you can use your scope as set up like normal. And then by adding this optical accessory on the front, you can simply just instantaneously add a huge amount of holdover uh, to your scope. And so you don't have to change any ergonomics in the back. You can stay um, right up on the rifle the exact same way every time. And it's a, a very nice way to go. Uh, when you start shooting big magnums at extreme long range, that's one thing you will find out pretty quick is that exactly how you're laying behind that rifle from shot to shot will have a, an impact actually even on velocity, but also on your point of impact based on how the recoil moves the rifle if you're situated higher or lower behind to get behind the scope. Uh, that'll be an issue sometimes and just everything else uh, if you change your ergonomics you change everything else in the way the rifle recoils and the entire system's thrown off just a little bit at elr it's enough to miss by 10 20 feet so keeping that in mind this uh option is a really good way to go in my opinion because it eliminates all that you just uh, have a conventionally mounted rifle optic like you would for anything else uh, this particular rifle, we got it zeroed at 100 meters. Um, I got my dope all the way out to the max adjustment range of these turrets, which is, you know, pretty far out there. Um, but I like to use, I like to have the option to use the center of the reticle as much as possible for ELR shooting, 
because there's less obstruction by the rest of the reticle. You don't have to count um, under pressure. Sometimes it's easy to get lost in your elevation, especially if you're holding way over the target. Um, so it's nice to be able to just have something fixed in there, dialed in. Um, your reticle is not obstructing the view of the target area, which is very difficult sometimes to spot, splash, and bullet trace at long range, which is it's essential to making a correction shot or determining if you even hit the target. So those are important things. So a lot of guys like to just dial them right in, if possible. Um, all that stuff being said, uh, this is actually a pretty easy unit to run. It's not super hard uh, to use or adjust, and it's actually really heavy duty. It's like military grade, and we'll get into that story after a little bit as well. The first time I showed you guys this was last year. Uh, we are at Charlie Mike Precision. Uh, he's a, a former Navy SEAL instructor, and he had his Ritter and Stark rifle out there, his 338, and he had a Charlie Tarak. And I just gave you guys a little glimpse of kind of the kit, the way he had it set up in conjunction with his, um, I think it was an IV mount, an adjustable mount. And so we we're kind of showing some of the proprietary equipment when we were down there. A lot of people were asking more about it, so we showed a video. The second video we did, we're showing the adjustment. So if you have more questions at the end of this video on exactly how to adjust these things, you can watch the more detailed video on the adjustment. We're not gonna get into all that again here. We're gonna give you more of a broad overview on how to use it. Um, and then we'll get into some more stuff after that, talking about a little bit of the history and how this thing's been effectively employed and how it's been battle tested. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna tell them exactly what scope you got. Either you'll uh, fill out the form online or you'll just call them up and visit with them. Um, I actually call them up. I'm, I look. I do a lot better when I do that way. I like to have a two-way confirmation to make sure I understand exactly what they're asking for. Uh, but I give them a call, and uh, we had them do one for a Schmidt Mentor PM2 with a 56 millimeter objective lens, which means they got a sunshade, and they cut the sunshade down, and they modify it to uh, and attach it to the first piece that attaches to the, the bell housing on the scope here. And you'll see that, what you'll do is you'll take your scope off so you can spin it around and you'll actually turn. This will screw onto the front, just like a sunshade. And at a certain point, before it bottoms out, so don't be worried if it bottoms out, back it up a full turn, but you're gonna get the top edge, which is the top right here, where you have the screw going through the top, which pinches it together right here. Uh, you're going to get that level. It's, it's very important that this is actually level up and down because when you add an additional amount of mils, if it's even off by like half a degree, it's going to be a huge amount off laterally. That'll be a big issue. And so you might have an extra wind that you didn't know was there or wasn't there, but you thought it was. <laughs> Never helpful. And so for more information on that, go ahead and watch the review where we showed you exactly how to get this thing set up. But they'll give that to you. You'll get that on there. You'll screw this screw down tight. You'll follow the instructions with the torque specs that you'll use there. And um, then what you do is you have four magnets right in the front here. And you'll see you got magnets here, magnets here, and then two little slots on the sides, which will be for your screw attachments, okay? And when you get the Charlie Terak unit, it's gonna come in a box like so, a little Pelican case. You're gonna snap it. It'll come with a couple of screws. Don't lose the little screws that come in there. You're gonna need those if you have a heavy recoiling rifle. You do have your instructions, which are very detailed. They show you all the different specs on how to torque everything, what order you wanna do everything when you're making your adjustments, how to adjust it, how to get your offset proper. Like I said, we do have the video on that if you're curious. But then you'll have the unit itself. And on the back of the unit, you're going to see the four magnets line up with the four magnets here. So this is magnetically attached. And the way it centers itself on here to get it in the exact same spot every time is there's a little bit of a V-block geometry going this way on here, kind of like a cross pattern, and this way, sideways and up and down. So it can't move this way and it can't move this way. It'll keep it aligned properly in both the Y and X axis. And so what we're going to do here is we're just going to Put it up to there. Now these magnets are very strong. It's gonna suck it right out of my hand and it's gonna just suck it onto there. It's gonna slam it on. Don't worry about it, this thing's pretty darn tough. So I'm just gonna put her on there. Okay, there she goes, it's on there. Now, you can actually shoot with most caliber rifles and this thing will stay attached. Um, if you're gonna get serious with it and you're not gonna take it on and off, if you're shooting something with a heavy, sharp recoil, you got the two screws that come in the back here and you'll get your screws tightened in and uh, you'll torque it down that way just to make sure it doesn't come off with recoil. I haven't had to use those screws yet, and I shot this on a 338 and a 308 so far. Um, so there was no problems there. 
Once this thing is attached, you're gonna notice there's some flats up here, okay? Up on top, and that's how you get this thing centered for cant. And you're gonna center that the same way you would do a reticle, okay? Um, when you adjust this and attach this and take it off, you're gonna verify that it's uh, good for your cant. And we should, on the video, you can watch exactly how that's done, okay? And if you had to make an adjustment this way, you just simply loosen up the screw right here, this pinch in this rear unit on. So this is how you're gonna adjust for your cant, okay? So I'll put that back on there again. So the way this works is relatively simple. You simply have two mirrors arranged like this in here, okay? So it's a periscope. When the target, the light of the target comes in here, it's gonna come into this window, which is actually 1.3 inches above the center line of your optic center line. So it's offset zero a little bit, and there's a reason for that, which we'll get into in a minute. Um, but uh, the light's gonna come in from the target in the front. It's gonna hit the first mirror on top, the light's gonna bounce down, and then it's gonna hit the bottom mirror down here, and then it's gonna come back into the scope, okay? And so when you're looking at the target, the light's coming in the front, bouncing down, coming in here, and then coming straight back into you. Now, what the cool thing about this is, you see this little wheel right here? This little uh, plate with the three screws on it? This is the adjustment for the bottom mirror, so you can tweak that mirror this way or this way. And by doing so, you can add like a huge amount of additional adjustment to your elevation knob, okay? And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna just loosen these screws just beyond uh, finger tight, you know, just to get them just broke loose. And then there's an adjustment screw right back here if you look closely, and you get a little Allen screw and you're gonna uh, turn that while you're looking at a ruler, and we show you in the video exactly how to do that, and get the appropriate amount of mills at whatever distance you want, right? Now the way I have mine set up is I have 20 mils of adjustment, the scope a little more than that, like 23 and a half mils, right, on the PM2. When I run out of that, what I do is I crank her back all the way down, and then I just snap this thing on the front, and this is set up for 20 mils. So that when I'm starting off on my 100, right, right now it's zeroed at 100 yards, I snap this on there, it's got an instant 20 mils. Even though this is reading zero, as I add, as I dial up, I'm adding this amount of adjustment to what I have in here. So I start with 20, so as I hit one, 21, as I hit two, 22, 23, and so on and so forth. When I'm on 10, I'm actually on 30, okay? The way I have this set up. Now you can customize this any way you want. Uh, you can adjust this. You simply loosen up the side plate, okay? And you just turn it, there's a little screw in here and a counter spring, and that'll actually turn the angle on that mirror and give you any amount of adjustment that you want. So if you wanna add 100 minutes of angle, for example, you can do that. Simply get yourself a big yardstick figure out how many inches 100 minutes of angle is at whatever range you're at. You can do that at 100 yards, it's gonna be a lot. <laughs> 100 inches, right? Or you can do it at 50 yards, it'd be about half that, right? Approximately, and you wanna use your actual uh, trigonometric uh, minutes of angle if you're, if you're doing that. You don't wanna use shooter's minutes of angle. So you wanna be very precise with that. Uh, but you're gonna adjust this, get the appropriate amount of uh, uh, adjustment that you wanna see. It's gonna move that much on the ruler. And then at closer ranges, you're gonna to have to adjust for your 1.3 inch offset to make sure you don't get that mixed in the equation. And then you're simply set. It's very easy. And then you tighten down these screws again uh, in a circular pattern. In the instruction instructional video, we show you exactly how to do that and what the torque specs are. And uh, it's very easy. Then it's basically set up. So all you have to do is uh, take it off when you're done with it, come back and you got your rifle optics set up just like normal. You run it like you would every day. And then if you do have some crazy situation where you have to reach out farther than you normally would be able to, you snap this bad boy on there and you get yourself an additional however many uh, mils or minutes you're gonna ever need. I believe it's like 300 mils of adjustment you can add to this and like over a thousand minutes, right? Uh, so it's a very, very, very flexible unit. And like I said a minute ago, I like to have that seamless transition from all my inside of my own stuff to that ELR range. I don't like having a gap in there where I run out of adjustment here, but then I overshoot it up here. That's not helping me uh, for what I do because I'm, I'm gonna engage targets in between zero and 2,500 yards or whatever, right? On a, a 338, for example. And so like we said in the video before, if you don't have a ruler, you can simply use a reticle and you can pick out a reference point at like an infinity range or ten, uh, five miles or three miles or a mile away, doesn't matter. Pick out a reference point Use your reticle to measure down. Okay, say there's 25 mils there. Let's say you want 50 mils. Okay, now take a reference point there and pick up where you left off and just measure it against your reticle and find another reference point down there. 
50 mils away. You can just use that using any reticle and you can add it together. And then what you're going to do is simply get the rifle situated with the center line of the optic without the unit attached on the top reference point. You're going to get the rifle dead steady so it's not wiggling around. Then you're going to go ahead, put this unit on, and then you're going to just dial it down until, until your reticle and the scope goes down to that bottom point. Then you'll have the proper amount of mils that you wanted. So something you can do without even firing a shot out in the field. It's pretty simple to run. Pretty cool unit, man. Um, the maintenance on it's not too bad. This has got really super hard-coated mirrors in it. This is uh, beyond optical grade like uh, surfaces and it's very scratch resistant. It's like salt resistant, sand resistant. It's very, very hard. You can actually take this deal off and put it in a bucket of soap water and just slosh it around. Take it out, let it dry off and you're just clean. It's actually designed to uh, handle that. So that's pretty darn cool. It's a very tough unit. Uh, you don't have to worry about it getting all nasty on the inside. It's a very simple device. You have two heavy duty mirrors in there. It's just basically a periscope. Now why is the center line of the scope here in its higher? That makes it a little more confusing to set up, right? It's actually an important reason for that. Um, if you're shooting really, really far away, you gotta consider that as you shoot farther away, you're gonna add adjustment like this. Your rifle bore is coming up and your scope's pointed this way. Your scope is actually in some cases, especially in a rifle with the long, heavy barrel, if you put a silencer on there especially, you're looking right at that and it obstructs your view of the target because your front of your scope, you're, you're so ramped up in the back that you're looking down into that. Now when you're adjusting this, you're not ramping your scope up, this is just turning the light like this, right? So now every, when you go farther and farther out with the Charlie, you're looking at an angle like this and you're actually looking right above the top of your muzzle. And so by raising it up higher like they have it set up here, you actually get a lot more, you can see past that a lot farther. You don't wanna have the barrel in the way of your line of sight. So that's why it's set up like that. So about a year or two ago, uh, there was a story that came out in the news, the Canadian sniper made a 2.2 mile kill uh, in the Battle of Mosul with a uh, TAC-50, McMillan TAC-50 rifle. And so that whole operation was kind of made public. There's a couple articles written on it and they did reveal some more of the details on the stuff that was being used. And this is actually one of the pieces of kit they were using for that operation. That's how they could shoot that far. Uh, immediately when that happened, we did release a video uh, talking about uh, the difficulties involved with shooting that far and how incredibly far that is. People don't know how far 2.2 miles is. That's ridiculously far. But with the use of proprietary spotting equipment, which we're not gonna talk about, and um, aerial surveillance perhaps, and stuff like this, those guys can now reach out really far. And uh, they got really good ballistic software that they're running, and um, yeah, so that's part of the kit that's used by outfits like JTF2 out of Canada. And they're some of the best long range shooters in the world, and uh, they did a, a pretty good job on that one. And so just thought that that was an interesting factoid for you guys, wondering if they did use this, and apparently, according to the article that I read, it, it, that's what was used. So it's uh, definitely being employed by real top-notch units, the, the tier one guys who really know what they're doing, who need equipment for proprietary applications like that. Um, they do use stuff like this and uh, TACCOM HQ has been servicing that market for a while. But like I said, now that ELR is getting more popular, uh, they were able to uh, reclassify some of their stuff um, in, you know, in a, into a different market space and now they can actually sell this um, to normal folks without getting too Western on the paperwork. Uh, it was a little bit of a process to go through when I got this, um, but that's a good thing. You don't want the wrong goofballs getting a hold of stuff like this. In all honesty, man, like unless you really know what you're doing, you have no prayer to, to shoot that far without serious training. And most of those goofballs don't have the discipline required in my experience to actually be very effective at those uh, long distances. So uh, even that's being said, I'm glad that our guys have this kind of stuff and we're allowed to have it, but they're not. <laughs> so pretty cool unit, man. I wanted to share that with you. Uh, do check it out. In, in my experience, this is very repeatable. You take it on, you take it off, and it goes exactly where you need it to go. Super heavy duty. Uh, just to review again, you don't have to mess with your ergonomics in the back side of the rifle, um, and you can have infinite amount of adjustment here without changing the tilt, which is a very nice feature. All right, guys, I hope that explains a little more of this mystery item you've been seeing so much of, and we'll catch you on the flip side.
Delta. You were asked about it. Yeah, there she is, guys. I'm going to give you a few seconds to... If you're sitting with your, your buddies there on the couch, who is the smartest one in the room? So we have the attachment here. This is very similar to one of these Charlie units, right? So it's the yeah, same correct. basic idea. An application, we have a window back here. We'll let you look at it a little bit. And it's off to the side, okay? Anyone know the answer? So what we've done with the Delta, I'm gonna step back over the rifle. I just saw set your whole optical system to look down the edge of the barrel. Therefore, if you have a, a MOA or mill value that you need to sh shoot where the barrel starts interceding, you are now looking down the side. Therefore, you can shoot tens of degrees of angle. And plus, the thermals coming the off thermals. Your, your barrel on a can gets really hot. At ELR, you produce enough mirage to, I mean, that mirage is making that target move by three and it four moves feet. moves around. Correct. Yeah, it moves all over. So you're looking past the mirage coming off your silencer. The offset zero, in this case, is in this case about 1.2 inches. And it is 1.2 inches at 100 yards, 200 yards, 1,000 yards, 3,000 yards. So we do we do have a smaller version we're making, specifically for the carbine, carbine guys and or high cycle rates for that whole reason. I'm looking around that heat mirage yeah. that is rising off the barrel and that suppressor system. Just looking right by it. Anywhere there's a thermal that, that's impacting yeah. your, your shooting ability, this will look down the side of it and go around the thermal. That's really smart. So, I like it. never taken a long-range class before but I can't imagine anybody delivering this much information in this short of a period yeah it takes a while after you've uh, been around a while you, you kind of accumulate most of this information some of it falls by the wayside some of it you retain at least you know it's there and if you need to use it you can pull on it you cannot miss an opportunity to gain knowledge you cannot the guys that are going to talk here, there must be 250 years of experience wandering around in the people that you're going to be exposed to. And I'm talking like hard-earned experience. Rex is, of course, an absolute natural. He showed us over the years that, so I, I wasn't surprised to see him perform beautifully because he was born for it. He, he is naturally an awesome presenter. So whether he does it through YouTube and video camera or live, and by the way, congratulations, this is uh, beyond the full house. I, I really think some people snuck up on you, man. You gotta double check on who pay and who didn't because I see uh, more than 80 people here. I see north of uh, 100 people. If you have not been studying long range for quite some time, I'm not saying not to come to this class. I'm saying you better put your helmet on. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go fast. You can't get information like this going to happen in this class. You can't get that like anywhere. He's already well known 
and he'll get better and better and better. <laughs> but, but you're right. We have we have a very strong concentration of people with this much interest and passion. You know, in, in this one room, uh, everybody's here looking for the best and trying to be the best. And it's I love it. And that's the secret to success, too, guys, is surrounding yourself with competent, intelligent, and passionate people. Yeah. yeah. And you see that a lot in this room because everybody that gathers together here is because of a love for the sport or the yeah. craft and the skill and the art and the science and you, Mr. Rex, you're kicking some butt up there today, man. You're in the zone. I'm getting sweatier and sweatier, Lou. Wait until four hours from now. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a little scared to get up there. I mean, Rex is such a great speaker in this forum, and I'm thinking, oh, man, I'm going to bore these guys to death. <laughs> but I can tell you one thing I like about these type of forums. When you get guys that admit to being interested in long-range shooting, you're past the guy who swears he can shoot a quarter-inch group with his factory uh, savage with a factory ammo. So these guys, they're not at that point. They've gone past that. They're really serious now, and they really know a lot of this stuff. It's more about how much further can I, I push my this is where they've come with capabilities with more knowledge and more practice and more information. We're gonna, we'll have a good time. Uh, the students will have a good time. You're going to get a tremendous uh, level of information. And there are different levels of knowledge. And when I met Rex, he was really the first guy that I had met that had that kind of tier one level of knowledge. This won't be the last time that you guys do this. This is the best thing that we, I have seen or been associated with thus far in this this industry this is really good uh, I think that the guys have learned a lot about this on um, uh, relative to the topics and how to handle it at the next one that they do I expect that the next one will be better and better and better and I think that the guys that go to it are going to uh, benefit and learn a lot but you're going to see some amazing things if when this company as he builds this company in this curriculum and it goes i'm telling you it's, it's going to be a bookmark in american farms training history there like something is different over there what's going on and people will come from all over Hey folks it's lou mccoy with the rex reviews project and we are here in texas Holy crap, man. Yeah. This has been a lot of fun. I'm here with Jesse and his lovely wife. And what, what do you guys have to say after the second day? So we get out here. The first thing we did was check out all of our guns and equipment. We want that solid. Um, we we uh, learn the fundamentals, make sure that everybody is doing things like correctly and properly. And that way, when we don't, when we start shooting out the longer distances, we don't, uh, you know, we don't have to wonder what, what's all going on out there, you know. And um, I think that's, that's really cool because you feel a lot more confident knowing that you're, you, you're solid, you got a solid foundation um, when you start engaging things way out there. So and you I start think that's great. Yeah, man. And you start off really close and you get all the bugs worked out and then you work out farther and it's no big deal. It's easy. Yeah. It's easy. So the system works, Mr. Rex. It works, my man. Just this experience was probably the best shooting experience I've ever had. It was the most I've ever learned, ever. So just getting to shoot out to 1,000, 1,100 yards, and these guys get you out there quick and do it the right way. But I think it's rolling down off the snow, right? Now what? Three? Nah. That's still barely a two. Oh yeah? It's hot air. Nothing. Yeah, reticle choice and design, I've really learned to, mm -hmm. like, that's really important. And, you know, we always focus on all the other stuff, mm -hmm. you know, but reticle design, you know, is very critical. Uh, if you pay attention to those classes and and watch those reviews, it'll all come together for you. And this is the place where it all comes together. Yeah, and you get out in the field and you get to apply all that knowledge and see it in action. And that's gratifying. Absolutely. And it's the real world uh, issues that uh, you have to, that you're really learning here as opposed to just the, you know, you get all that technical data and then you bring it out here to the real world and you put it all together and it works. The secret Rex taught me about butterfly kisses on the cheek. And it's actually was, that, true? It was true. Did it, it was, work? It totally worked. What? It totally was. 
It happened earlier today, and all day I've been just on. Uh, like I just said a minute ago, yesterday everybody showed up. They were nervous. They didn't yeah. know what to expect. And look at the crowd behind us now. It's like a party back there, man. People yeah. are just having the time of their lives and not only having a good time, but making some shots, too. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. impressive ones. They're learning what, what they come out here with. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, dot, the dot drills, a lot of the drills that Rex and, and uh, Paul are having us do, um, they really make you, you know, get you into shape and make you, you know, do exactly what you did the last time and be consecutive, you know. So I think that's, that's a, a just super way to start to, you know, start to do this stuff. So. Yeah, it is. And you lay that solid foundation and the rest is easy, man. Yeah, we're just now it's, it's not even really hard to shoot out there. We're shooting out at 1,100 yards and... Uh, really not that big a deal now that we you know <laughs> now that we know what to do all right what just happened man i just hit right. a water bottle at 875 yards and you had it one shot one shot that's not bad so what's the secret man aim small miss small amen well done brother thank you as long as you pay attention and do what the instructors say it will all come together as an equation and the equal sign pops right up My name's edwin from boston Traveled out here to Pennsylvania to take the class to shoot past my home range of 600. Shot out to 1030, made some hits. Every time uh, Rex teaches you something new and gets you comfortable, he totally messes with you. Get you dirty, <laughs> get you muddy, makes you roll around in the rain and the mud and the dust. And then he takes your scope and he messes it all up and he just, he teaches us something new every time. So great time, good guys. Nice shooting there, Tex. Thanks man, second round hit on the gong and uh, first round hit on Fred. Um, thousand yard shot that was pretty awesome right. feels good for first of stage of the day doesn't it yeah it does yeah it does i wasn't uh, shooting very no. good yesterday but yeah, it's good to come back right. haven't shot past 400 yards until i came to rx 18 um right off the bat brought us right out to a thousand yards gave us some confidence and after working the range tables i seen it i couldn't hit any target that i knew the true range to and had to dope for all the way out to and including thousand yards you're exposing you know, all the different students, including myself, you know, to some different techniques, uh, pulling from different arenas, uh, whether it be from some application of competition, you know, PRS, NRL kind of things. Um, you, when we can't always take a prone shot, you know, shooting off of obstacles, mm -hmm. unstable positions. I came to the IRX just to learn everything. It's a great place to be, great people. Learned quite a bit. I got me dialed in at ranges I've never even looked at before. Um, I've been to RX 17001 seminar and 001 uh, shooting, and so I have some familiarity. Um, but uh, this is just a lot better. This is what I really enjoy. Um, the instruction is, is again top notch. We learn any problems we have, we immediately have someone diagnose the problem. It's because it's so relaxed, the environment, um, you're constantly learning and you don't even really realize it. I think it's just been an awesome experience and, and the knowledge is unbelievable. Hey, my name's Mitch. I just, uh, over here at the uh, Rex Live Fire event, learned a hell of a lot. Uh, I got my rifle zero for 100 yards yesterday and within a few hours I was hitting 1,030 yards. Past 300 yards of my life, so it's definitely worth the money, definitely worth the trip, the hassle, everything about it's been great. Rex has been great, the crew's been great. Oh, this has been this has been terrific from my standpoint. We've seen things that we never expected to see. Let me see, we've got one guy, first time ever, at over a mile or whatever, and, and he's hitting 25, 80. I think everyone got to a mile, didn't they? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, everyone got yeah. to mile in the whole class and, relatively uh, easy. It's, it's it's really been surprising, and that just shows how the uh, it shows how the equipment and it shows how the uh, the shooters have progressed learning and, and with the instruction and all. These guys have had good instruction, and they've just got the job done. And how far were you shooting? It was one mile. One mile, and yeah. what were you using here? 300 wind mag. 300 wind, wind mag. mag. But probably not. Watch out, Rex. Rex. So you just hit the 2,500 yard. Like, what's your solution? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 116 and a half MOA elevation and 14 MOA windage. And you had four shots. Yes, sir. You got in your team? We, I had six. So 10 total to hit 2,551.
So uh, tell me the story. How did you finally spot where you're hitting? I saw the trace. I saw his trace, and I called it good. But he was about six inches off the top right corner of the plate. He made a minor correction, uh, bottom left edge of the plate, and I, I saw the top of the bullet, but I lost it, but it was an impact. 